So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to talk about how we are served through our social media and electronic devices. Um, there are more stakeholders uh, who take advantage of the digital dimension which developed in the recent decades and that allows always more to access to personal information. And it is all around us and most of people are embracing it always more. Um, first of all, I would like to talk about social media, which I consider to be the main means of digital surveillance. Um, if we think about this, we can easily realize that the amount of information about their users is immense and every day it increases and most users do not realize how easy it is to access to their personal data and that they are sharing a fairly accurate picture of themselves and providing information that can be used against them and often unconsciously. So before I talk about um, uh, the consequences it has, I wondered about why people are using social media. And they build a lot of communities of social support that makes people feel part of something and are in a way empowering them. They are, are also making users more participatory and motivates them to communicate with friends online without having to meet. And moreover, they are engaging, which can be positive until it gets to addiction, but that's not my topic, and might be also funny to use in free time. So as I said, I'm not referring to digital addiction in this case. So um, other than positive aspects, there are also negative ones in the field of surveillance, but it's difficult to say what they are because surveillance um, is something quite ambiguous and there are many contexts that are different and could be harmful or harmless. So through my research I wanted to give not a proper answer about this topic but more points of discussion that increase my sensibility on, on, uh, on this topic. Also because it's something that is hard to avoid and I feel like the only solution we have now is to be aware of what is happening and the mechanism how the mechanism work and yeah, how they work so that we can think better about what we are doing into the digital dimension. Uh, so uh, how does it work? How does surveillance through social media and social and electronic devices work? So every time we post something on social media, we are giving out information about ourselves. For example, our musical tastes, what we like to eat, our hobbies, sports, political and religious thoughts, wants, beliefs, um, friendships, interests, activities, and so on. Uh, but what is happening to all these informations? Um, through algorithms, social media are able to create a sort of personal identity or database through user-generated content. And social media are trading on that content to, in order to, to make profit. In fact, nine in every 10 internet users are being actively monitored online and everything is automated. So these advances in AI have enabled billions of accounts to be watched in real time. Um, in addition to building a database created with the data we publish on this platform, uh, applications such as WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and so on, have access to other information, including the camera and the microphone of our smartphones and electronic devices. So what happens when a user grants an app access to their camera and microphone? In these cases, the app could do the, the following. Uh, access both to the front and back camera, record you at any time the app is in the foreground, take pictures and video without you knowing, uh, run real-time face recognition to detect facial features or expression, detect if the user is alone or is with somebody else, and upload random phrase of, of the video stream to your web service and run a proper face recognition software which can find existing photos of you on the internet and create a 3D model based on your face. <laughs> A similar situation happens with virtual assistants such as Google Assistant, Alexa, Siri, which have become a social integration into nowadays lives. 
They are constant, constantly listening to every conversation the owner is having, even if the owner is not talking to a virtual assistant. The device is still listening the converse, to the conversation in hopes that the owner will need assistance, as well as to gather data to improve their algorithms. Recent, recently, um, there are privacy issues concerning that in, what information can go to third party corporations that operate virtual assistants such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and so on, and how, about how this data can potentially be used. Uh, but before I talk about the stakeholders that are interested into those data, I would like to talk about how surveillance softwares create our personal identity from what they find on the internet. So they collate social media check-ins to dot our movement over Google Maps and collects our social networking activity to see who are my friends, where do we spend time together, what are our, our, our activities, what we do, uh, what we like, and all those kind of information I already told you before. It basically creates an algorithm for predicting our behavior, knowing what we already have done. And these softwares are kind of a Google for spies and have detailed information on, how, on people who insist on narrating their lives through social media. It is therefore quite easy to predict what people are going to do. For example, if you post more times that you're working out at the gym, maybe every Saturday morning, the algorithm will predict that the next Saturday morning, you, where you will be, what you will do. And of course, the more information we give, the more the prediction is accurate. And other uh, than knowing what we eat, go, where we go to the gym and what we do, they also know what we and our friends look like because we are also posting pictures of our faces. So it is basically like uh, there is one episode of Black Mirror uh, where a dead man's personality can be replicated from the traces of himself that he, had, he left behind on social media. So they basically created a sort of robot in which they implanted this algorithm which, uh, that was saying how the robot should behave using the information that they find uh, on, the, on the social media. Uh, now I would like to show you a short minute, it's two minutes, uh, that is quite self-explanatory and show the consequences that this has. So I'm not going to say much about it, it just makes clear what I just explained. Oui, oui, bien. Je hebt een vriendin, euh, Julie de Een boeiend liefdesleven. Drie, vier... De vierde, daar zei ik meestal over, dus dat weten niet veel mensen. Is het meest pies voor? <laughs> Maison rouge, balcon, plan. Ja. Ik zie geld, ik zie uh, transacties. Maar ik ken je rekening maar van buiten? Ik denk dat ik het wel weet. Het staat wel negatief op je bankrekening. Ja? 9, 7. Last month, mm -hmm. you spent 200 euro's on alcohol. Vorige maand, 400 euro aan kleding gespendeerd. 8, ja. 5. Voor een huis dat van eigenaar gaat veranderen. 250.000 euro. Ja, eigenlijk. 41. Ja. Juist? Ja, dat is Oh my god. Oh man. Ik vind je zo eng. Okay, so uh, 
Um, as I said, there are more stakeholders that are interested in the status. For example, companies and corporations, school, employers, police, governments, and security departments. All of, all of these stakeholders have a common interest. They want to control and predict future behaviors by watching what they already have online about us. Uh, I would like to deepen into these stakeholders and I will start from companies and corporations. Um, thanks to these algorithms that collect all this information about us, uh, they are able to predict our future and can control our data in order to be able to influence the consumers and shape our self-identity according to the market logics. Um, every time we search something on our digital devices, we are giving clues about what we like. And through social media and website pages, we will start to get uh, targeted advertising about things that we might like. Um, corporate surveillance of computer activity is very common, and this may be the most obvious one. Uh, the data collected is often used for marketing purposes and sold to other corporations and can be used as a form of business intelligence, which enables the corporation to um, better tailor their products and services uh, to be more, in order to be more desirable for their customers. Uh, also, in this case, there are privacy issues around this type of targeting uh, since it, requir it, is, it requires aggregation of large amount of personal data, including highly sensitive ones such as sexual orientation, health issues, location, and so on. And without the knowledge of many people, individual data are exchanged without consent. To give a, a personal example, um, I would like to share this episode that happened to me more times and that many of you might be familiar with because I'm not the only one who talk about this. And yeah, one day I was talking with a, with a friend about a specific item, uh, a bag from a famous fashion brand which had a really particular shape. So it was out of common. It was something that you don't see every day around the streets. And I remember talking with her about how ugly I found that item. Without even searching it online, we were just uh, talking. And after one or two hours, I got an advertisement on, my, on, on one of my social media exactly about this speci specific bag. So I took a screenshot of the, of the advertisement. I sent it to my friend through a WhatsApp message complaining about the fact that my, my smartphone was listening to my conversation. And after one hour, one or two hours, uh, my friend uh, sent me an, another message with the, exactly, the exact same screenshot because she got the exactly same advertisement on her social media. And this sort of episode happened many times with different kinds of objects. And in a way, I found it funny, the fact that my phone didn't recognize that I talked about something that I really don't like, but it thought the contrary. And this is probably because the algorithm just picked some keywords and not the entire sentences. The sentences. So um, yeah, basically it just gave me, gave me confirmation that he was listening to me. Another stakeholder which, stakeholder which might be interested, interested into, into those data are employers. Um, in many cases, employers themselves monitor their employees. They do so in order to protect the company's assets and to control public communications, but most importantly, to make sure that their employees are actively working and being productive. And in my opinion, this can emotionally affect people. But another way that they could use it is when they decide whether or not to hire someone. It has become common to search online for information so as to create an overview of the type of person we are hiring. But in many cases, the image of our stuff that appears online is not the image we would like to appear in. And we must, we must therefore be uh, very careful about uh, what we about the information that could compromise our image and that would create difficulties into finding a job. 
And, and to do, just to do an example, in Britain in 2011, 76% of Facebook images showed people in a drunk state. And this is for sure something that we want to avoid if you are searching for a job. Uh, the next stakeholder I want to talk about is the police and the government. Uh, in this case, it's maybe a less controversial kind of surveillance because it mostly aims to safety in some cases, not in all of them. And in fact, in in the case of surveillance, in this case, surveillance could help monitoring bad actors or criminal groups, knowing where they are and what they're doing. Um, a small example could be the app Find My Phone, which is some, which if somebody steal my phone, could be used to know the location and the face of the thief, since the app has access to camera, microphone, and location. And to make another recent example of how police and government are using our electronic devices is related to coronavirus. For example, you might have read that the Swiss Federal Council has asked to the company Swisscom to use mobile phone data to check how the Swiss react to instruction from the, from the state due to the coronavirus. And they can control if the ban on meeting people in public spaces are being observed and if people really stay home. So Swisscom is taking basically over the grouping of people in public spaces and when 20 mobile phones are in a confined space close to the other, uh, the operator informs immediately the authorities. Uh, a more strict but similar approach happened into other countries like China which introduced an app to track the position of people in order to see if they get too close to someone with the, the virus. <coughs> and the last stakeholder that I want to talk about is the private user. In some cases, the same people who are complaining about being spied are themselves tracking and monitoring others. Probably all of us have already made a research about somebody we know and in a way it can be okay because uh, there are information that ourselves put online, but I'm not sure if it is really ethic. Um, what would the other think about this? Personally, I wouldn't like if people search information about me. Um, so um, why aren't this kind of surveillance banned? Um, in my opinion, um, I think that this corporation keeps doing it because it's te technically not illegal. They are using materials that we ourselves upload online and even in the case of having access to our location, microphone and camera, we are giving our consents. But most of the case, uh, or most of the time, we are giving it unconsciously. Uh, in fact, I think the problem is that social networking sites and electronic devices are often not transparent about what information uh, is shared and how it is shared. And users may be posting information that they believe will be viewed only by friends, but instead uh, is being uh, viewed by government officials or a kind of co co corporations. And even if we think about the terms of condition or terms of use, which are those super long pages of information that we, that we have to agree with when we start using an app or our smartphone or electronic devices, most of people don't read them. And even for customers that do read this information, it is often decoded in a bug and an unclear manner. And the text is objectively small with a small font and is often considered too wordy or lengthy for the average user. So basically the average user uses these sources without knowing exactly what their, the, what their conditions are. So they are accepting them without even reading them. And even if we read them and don't agree, it, is basically, it basically means that we cannot use the device or service. So they put them in order to, to get our consent and to be legal, but we actually don't have any choice if we want to use them. We have to accept them. Um, 
since what we put on the internet remains there, we cannot change what we have posted. So the only thing we can do is to document ourselves in order to be aware of what is happening so that we think about what we want to post before we do it. So I don't think there is an alternative solution for this, but what we need is sensibilization and we need to understand the distinction between online and offline dimension. So probably tracking information through social media is not illegal because we are posting those information and agree with them kindly because yeah, as I said, it's everything written in the terms of conditions but they are unclear, so they are doing in that way. Uh, but I still think it's not ethic, ethic because it's like playing with somebody who doesn't really understand the rules and precondition of what they are doing. So in some cases it's our fault because we agree on this without documenting ourselves of, um, on the topic. But at the same time, these corporations uh, don't have, these corporations and companies don't have interest into making clear the consequences and how they're using our information. So they want to be vogue in every case so that most of people don't realize how they're using those informations. Yeah, and that's it. I would like to start the discussion.